you find different ways to not only motivate your team verbally, but perhaps on occasion paint a mental picture for them as well. Week nine is off and rolling from Evanston. And Maryland will touch the ball first with Wislowski out to the edge, and he's set down at the 34. So with that feeling of trying to flush back to back losses to Leah Tungavailoa. So fresh off the bye week Maryland with Tungavailoa on the first throw to Ty Felton and looking fresh slinging it out for a first down after the week off. Maryland one of the top offenses in the Big Ten back to back throws to begin. This is Jay Sean Jones and Northwestern coming off one of their best defensive games of the season last week against Nebraska and Caden Prather with his first touch from Maryland and into the second level and stumbles down inside the 15. Three snaps a couple of first downs and now Tungavailoa on the ground and he slides. Play fake to Roman Hemby. Tunga Vailoa to the end zone and a touchdown. touchdown. Ty Felton starts the get day for the Terps. A very swift first drive for Maryland. A couple of big plays capped by the touchdown. Look really clean for the Terps. It was a Caden Prather 36 yard end around that ended up setting up the score with Ty Felton punching it in for Maryland. You can tell what they were trying to attack. The first touch for Northwestern goes to A.J. Henning, their electric do-it-all wide receiver. Sullivan making his third straight start and handing off to the edge for Cam Porter. And the Northwestern staff working with him on pocket comfortability. And he's in the pocket off play action here. A collapsing pocket and down he goes. Towards the bottom of the screen, we talked about in the open, Jay Sean Barham now moving out to the edge. Uh, here Barham comes Porter picks him up but Ruben Hippolyte is in there to sack him. It's now growing within the Williams scheme. So first down for Northwestern but then a couple of sacks. But after that uh, long quick scoring drive. Tungavailo out for the second time and that ball is taken away by Northwestern. In for a short game. So this is an area Northwestern has to get better. Singled up right now. Sullivan looking away from that side and doing what he does best using his legs and dragging the pile inside the five and he's marked at the one with the first down. So Sullivan after his run to set up first down handing to Cam Porter who is definitely in now. No doubt about that touchdown for the Cats off the takeaway from Gallagher. So just over a minute off the takeaway from Gallagher getting in the face of Tungavailoa and Northwestern. And it's a takeaway from their linebacker Bryce Gallagher that sets up the game tying score from Cam Porter today. Wislowski after the penalty on Northwestern on the PAT with a short field and Wislowski who already has a return touchdown this year is out across the 50. Yeah, you're Vaseline on today, gripping your boards. I, I literally asked for some downstairs here at the stadium. No one had any. Well, Tung Vailoa given a short field and Antoine Littleton. Yeah. Oh, how didn't I know that? Should have gone to Elise. On this cold day where the grip is tough, Tung Vailoa keeps it himself and reaches. I thought he overall handled that pretty well. A flea flicker. Tungavailoa with a good grip and Felton has it knocked away. That has been surprising is the drops for this very talented wide receiving core. And a good coverage too from Hollis and Ozima. That's caught by Jones and back into the backfield here. And the big power back seeking the edge and he twists forward right at the mark. Size made up for it though. Oh yeah. Maryland looking for a go ahead score flag comes out at the snap and that's overshot that's on or off the ball. Northwestern declined it and Maryland sets up a stream with Roman Hempy now Northwestern in chase mode they can't get him. He speeds into the end zone to put Maryland in front. Mike Loxley called him a highway runner. <laughs> And he got out into the open space and 40 yards. It hasn't been the case this season. Straight off the desk from Harold Shelton. Oh, yeah. Well done. I thought you were going to say hot off the presses, but that's fine. Now Phillips will be in there a lot. It's Bunyan setting the middle of the defense for Maryland to start this drive, and Tyus takes a big pop. 
Bo Braid coming up from safety and a little extra after. Lang the tight end and Caleb Wheatley the linebacker have to be separated. The staffs said there was a lot of fighting in practice this week. There's A.J. Henning on the screen, and he'll make this a third and short. Well, you want intensity still out there, though. After the play, unsportsmanlike conduct, defense number nine, 15-yard penalty from the end of the run. After the penalty, it's first down for Northwestern. And Sullivan moves the pocket underneath to Bryce Kurtz, and that's dumped after a short gain by Glenn Miller. Third straight start for Sullivan for the injured Ben Bryan. Off play action. And he threads it into Bryce Kurtz for a first down, and he tumbles inside the red zone. There's some more comfortable throwing action. The big play guy in an offense that could really use some more of that. And Tyus is dragged down to the backfield. Caleb Wheatland makes the ankle tackle, 90 to 100 snaps. <laughs> Not the case for Maryland's backers. Right. Keep those guys fresh. Off a pump, Sullivan. End zone for Kurtz. He got him for six. At Ryan Field with two big plays on that drive, both of 20 we'll plus yards. A short to kick to Wislowski, who had the long return earlier in this one. Personal foul, unnecessary roughness, kicking team number 94, 15 yard penalty. We added in the run, first down. And it brings it out to the 46 for the Terps to start and try to take another lead late in the first quarter. Now Ramon Brown is healthy this week and he gets his first carry. Offensive coordinator Josh Gaddis from Maryland says that he'll play 15 to 20 snaps today with Ramon Brown. Tonga Vailoa out of the belly of Brown, but also seeing one of the most prolific offenses that they'll see all year. So like Bryce Gallagher at the second level walks out of the box. Tonga Vailoa on the run, and he has to bench it. Carmine Boston was chasing him. And that was a major concern for David Braun when we right. talked to him yesterday is the wide set that that offensive line has for Maryland and how creative they'd have to get in creating pressure. And a movement up front before this first snap. On first and five, Sullivan to throw, and Sullivan complete. Marshall Lang with a first down. Sullivan's pass is complete. Third play, the last two series that has gone for 20 plus yards. AJ Henning with blockers out in front. That lineman getting out and springing him for a first down. Well timed tunnel screen. NFL games. You got two matches on Fox tomorrow. And Brendan Sullivan, first play of the second quarter for Northwestern, gets shoved out late and definitely a flag coming out. After the late hit by Wilmot, play action for Sullivan. And quickly underneath, using his tight ends again, Thomas Gordon moves the pile across the 20 for a first down to the red zone. It's something that's a little different than last week. For Northwestern getting the tight ends involved in the passing game. And Cam Porter hopping through inside the 15. And the tight end in this set is Duke Olgus and Porter running off his side and he reaches for the end zone and he's just a touch short. He had a huge smile on his face. <laughs> he couldn't wait to get to the edge in this game. Sullivan looking for the end zone and it's broken up. I'm guessing the sun piercing into his eyes may have played a factor there. Back to the ground game with Porter off the first hit. And pressure from the Terps. And Sullivan flicks it out for a touchdown. Cam Porter in to give the Cats the lead. Now Olsen for the add on for Northwestern. And back with Anthony Heron, Connor Onion, Elise Meneker down on the sidelines. Western just took a lead on Maryland with the Terps trying to get to bowl eligibility today. This is a live ball and Maryland does pounce on it. And Maryland will try to get it tied with Tunga Bailoa out to Deitches and he's smothered. You know the kid that needs the blankie? That's Corey Deitches <laughs> to Tunga Bailoa. He's the safety guy. And Roman Hemby. And Kenny Soares 
There's a guy getting everybody organized. They use in creative pressure. He drops out. Tonga Bailoa steps up on third down. Tonga Bailoa contested catch by Prather. But then you see some of the other skills pop up on film. And another one just flashed. The strong hands for seventh all time. And back to the run game with Hemby, who already has a touchdown in this game. Getting Corey Bullock back. It's shifted around the entire right side of the line, not having him against Illinois. Off that right side, it's Hemby. After a run heavy sequence, it's Jay Sean Jones. First down, and he keeps it turning inside the 10. Start to exploit some of the youth in the secondary. It's Tonga by Lowe to the edge, cuts inside. Ninth play of this drive coming up. And to the ground game, trying to bang it in there with Littleton, and he won't get there. The winningest quarterback in Northwestern history, number four all time. Tight formation here. We're going to push some tushes. They are with Tungavailoa and into a wall, and he did not get there. A bunch of cats submerged underneath that push, and it's fourth down. And usually, when you're trying to move the pile and sort of push all the bodies in there, you want the quarterback to get some pad level. There was a slight delay from Tungavailoa, allowing some movement to present itself. But now here, with about a foot to go. That's a part of what goes into that play call. He said, we're going to take two shots at it. Major juice on the Northwestern sideline for a fourth down. Tungavailoa rolls out. That ball is tipped and incomplete. We've seen a lot more of this, this type of exuberance from David Braun as the season's worn on here. So a long field for the Cats offense leading by a touchdown and they push some bodies ahead with Brendan Sullivan. But the body language that he expressed and showed to us really made you sense that he believed that they could win this game and would win this game. Certainly did. Flags all over the field before second and eight. False start. Offense number 56. Sullivan on the move and underneath to Johnson who's through two tackles and Johnson has a first down. A little breathing room for Joseph Hyman and the Cats offense. Getting to play much better football here in recent weeks than they were earlier even with some of the indecision in the lineup. Sullivan barely has any Terps in the picture going one on one on the edge for a first down. After they were backed up, a couple first downs for the Cats. A.J. Henning can't turn the corner. Well played by Gavin Gibson. At least that goes back to some of the conversations in the summer. Uh, another quick pop to Henning. Started this game 7 of 7. And on a third down, Sullivan using a couple of lead blockers. And the legs extend the drive again for Brendan Sullivan. The speed is a little bit surprising for an <laughs> offensive lineman's kid. He takes a shot and funnels it in. What a throw from Sullivan. Hitting Cam Johnson along the sideline. Attacking one-on-one -on -one opportunities. Back to the ground game with the physical back, Tyus, and taking Maryland for a ride here. Another first down. Driving so methodically, but now the clock ticks. And Tyus is buried. It'll be a third down. With the clock stop for Brendan Sullivan. He's away from pressure. On a strong stiff arm, keeps the play alive and avoids a big loss. And Jack Olson from 33 yards out to make it a 10 point game all over the internet last week when he had three field goals. So a 10 point lead for Northwestern. And a short kickoff. Remember, Northwestern gets the second half kickoff. Underneath, and there comes the Cats defense flying up again with Rod Hurd. He slams Hemby down to make it second down. As the nickel, Rod Hurd has to be able to read this, and he does so exceptionally in the open field against Hemby. He had zone eyes on it the whole way. More pressure. Tunga Vailoa wheels out of it. And steady with his legs to Jay Sean Jones in late half situations. 
Tonga by Loa across the middle. Deitches snags that out of thin air. First down, Corey Deitches. He didn't end up taking a big hit, but there's still a level of courage that's necessary to be willing to go up and get this football knowing defenders are converging. One of the biggest hitters in the Big Ten was right there, Gallagher. Back to back first downs. Tonga by Loa escaping and complete. For a third straight one downfield to Caden Prather. This drive has gotten going in a hurry. Prather had to come back and get this football in here inside the final two minutes of the half. It does briefly stop the clock to move the chains. And a timeout for Northwestern with Maryland in hurry up mode. As Maryland in position to make this a one score game before half. Tonga wants it right now, but he won't get it. Well, it depends on the matchup right now. There's enough where you don't know for sure you've got a one-on-one -on -one matchup for Prather. Well, he has to go to Deitches on a little flip out, and it's incomplete. And Tungavailoa protected and with some contact in the end zone, incomplete. In on coverage on one of the top pass catchers for the Terps. The 34-yard try before the half for Maryland. And it is through to make this a seven-point game. After three big chunk plays in a row from Tungavailoa through the air. Drive settles for three. And the Terps trying to bounce back, get to bowl eligibility today. Go into the half trailing as Sullivan puts a knee on it. They're hoping for some chaos in the East. They felt they had the team coming into this year that could contend for the Big Ten title. We'll need some help in the East with Penn State and Michigan still on the schedule. the second half count me in off we go second half Maryland kicking away to Northwestern who leads by a touchdown Coco Azuma on the return for Northwestern and he's got a seam right up the middle kicker to beat he's around him and Felton runs him out of bounds so that sets up Brendan Sullivan with good field position looking to extend the halftime lead around the edge Sullivan throws it away he said at least that they were up for this game but had their attention and like you said in a dogfight Northwestern two of four on third down in the first half underneath Porter on the screen Miller got a piece of them just to make it a 10 point game again and Olsen again if you want to talk spades I'm all over it Euchre I, I'm familiar with it. just not as much. And say we can get you to Dean for a Euchre rules explanation. <laughs> Here's Roman Hemby. The offense has to keep them in this contest. And Colby McDonald breaks out to the second level. And McDonald at the 45. McDonald fortunate to get back on top. We're right back into McDonald's hands and a juggle for Jones. And he's drilled by Johnson. Hemby motions out. Tunga by Lowe with the clean pocket and incomplete. Tunga by Loa wants it all right here and he overshoots Hemby. There's a flag down. A marker on that same sideline where that route broke. This may be a false start here in terms. Illegal formation. Offense five or more in the offensive backfield. The penalties decline. The result of play is fourth and David down. Braun and Northwestern decline that. A.J. Henning back to get Colton Spangler's punt. Spangler pinned one inside the five in the first half. And a wobbly kick. Takes a Maryland bounce inside the 20. Brendan Sullivan has also run for 35 yards. He's thrown for a buck 64. He's got the ball back in his hands up 10 points. And a contested throw down the sideline. The second half of games for Northwestern has been so make or break because so many of the games have been tight or they've been trailing. And Sullivan is dragged down. A guy to watch is down in the bottom of the screen. Donnell Brown on the edge for Maryland. One of their top disruptors on this down. He's around the edge. Brown still in pursuit. And Brown has the sack. Was to be a pass rusher. Early in the season, some other things popped up with turnovers. But that is his biggest strength. One season. Okay. I know. It's the English major in me. So. You understand the intent. 
a starting field position perspective, many drives have gone well in that way from Aaron. Hubbard on the chase of Tungavailoa again, and the angles him out of bounds. On the pull, it's Tungavailoa trying to bounce past Azuma and right at the sticks. Tungavailoa looked for a new play before this first down snap. He pulls it. McLaughlin couldn't get home. Tungavailoa to the end zone and incomplete. Anthony Tungavailoa is halfway into the touchdown celebration. <laughs> Colby McDonald, more of him in this second half. And back to back carries for him that go for first downs. It's one thing Josh got is. We saw pretty much everybody else in that running back room besides McDonald in the first half. He's on the field again and on the run again. And Bryce Gallagher slams him down after a couple of yards. This is where Northwestern has been able to bow up more frequently in the game. It is Hemby back in there, and like you're talking about, not much there down in this area with Bryce Gallagher. Corey Deitches is sort of off the ball as a wing player right here. On this third down, he is looking to Prather, who makes the catch on Johnson, and he's marked down at the 12, which is short, and a flag comes in at the end of that. After the play, personal foul, unnecessary roughness, defense number 34. Only base it off of when the whistle gets blown. Here's Littleton weaving inside the five. And this will be their tenth play. Trying to make it a one score game. Plenty of time for Tunga Bailoa. Now McLaughlin on the chase. Tunga Bailoa runs it out of bounds. Maryland went for it on a fourth down and goal in the first half. Didn't get it. This a third down and goal. Tunga Bailoa dances. Steps up again. Nowhere to go. The guy that was penalized coming up and making a play after, Xander Mueller. So Jack Howe's out to make it a one score game again from 22 out. And he tucks it inside the upright. Okay. Texas A&M. Oh, right. And then Alabama. Where he coached Forrest Gump. <laughs> I like that. And this is A.J. Henning weaving up. Leading by seven after the Howes field goal. Cut it to a one-score game again. And penetration right up the middle from Isaac Bunyan. That forced a field goal that made it a ten-point game. Sullivan off of the play fake. Johnson in pursuit. Sullivan dances out, and now he goes down. See if that gets a little more exotic on third down. They bring five, and Sullivan in the arms of Wheatland. He does get positive yards, but Donnell Brown and Caleb Wheatland, back-to-back -back series for the Maryland defense where they've played three plays and gotten off the field. Jay Sean Jones retreating, drops the ball, but Maryland recovers it. The professional game, the anticipation he's throwing the ball with now. And he throws right away, and it's knocked out of there by McLaughlin. And Penn State seems to have their footing up 10. And Jay Sean Jones threw a herd, and guys flipping and flopping. Jones staying on his feet. Maryland trying to go on a game tying drive late third quarter. Quick pop, it's Jones. Jones sneaks through and has just enough to move the chains. The small difference here, you, you can tell, coached up on the sideline, they're likely communicating to the receivers. Reach out and snatch the football with your hands. A couple of snaps in a row here with Jay Sean Jones making that adjustment, as opposed to the football getting into your body and sort of eating you up on a, a chilly sort of day where the football gets more slick. Got these gloves on. The gloves can withstand the cold very well. Just reach out and snatch the football. After Jones moved the sticks, he's the motion man. Tonga by Loa, shot play. Prather knocked out of there. The underneath coverage from Theron Johnson saved that from being a big play. He predetermined that one the whole way. They brought Jay Sean Jones in motion, and he was hoping that that motion and then the route Jones ran would draw the coverage off. So he ends up throwing into double coverage to Kate Prather. Braver really never got off the ground to really take the opportunity to try and high point the football. 
it was well defended on the back end by Northwestern because they didn't necessarily bite on that motion out of the backfield. A day E with the coverage over the top Johnson with it underneath to make it second down and another screen Octavian Smith slips out that play looked like it was going for a loss instead it's a first down for Smith. This one did get into the body of Smith a little bit but then after he caught it clean working back downhill on the tunnel screen and a couple of teammates trying to make some blocks there the offensive line not able to get out of the stack quickly enough this is all Octavian Smith moving the chains from Maryland. His first year is a prominent part of this Maryland offense. It's been a little bit quiet since he had a touchdown about a month ago against Michigan State. Might get him some more targets from Tunga Vailoa. It's been a lot of McDonald in the backfield for Maryland in the second half. And he's the midfield right at the sticks. First down, Colby McDonald. It lived up to my height. You should have done the promo then. Oh. Next time. Next time. Start of the fourth quarter. Chirps chasing a touchdown and off target from Tunga Vailoa to Ty Felton. Let's check in with Elise. You know, it was after their last drive. It was the first time that I saw frustration from Talia, whether it was a fumble, a touchdown. He was the same person coming over to the sideline, but this time slamming his helmet, it seems, between the lack of production and the calls. He just wasn't happy. Went over to Coach, talked to him a couple of times. Just reminded me how Coach told him, he said, after the Ohio State game, hey, trust your ability. You don't have to make more than what's there. Just make those plays that are. Well, Elise, Roman Hemby. On that pass from Tunga Vailoa had nowhere to go. Kenny Soares makes the play. That's the thing with Tunga Vailoa. A, a lot of talk about mastering his emotions and how far he's come in that area of his game. And it matters. It matters at the quarterback position. And, you know, gets football out of his hands quickly to read, but then Kenny Soares just reacts through that block of Caden Prather and now brings up a third and very long here for the Maryland offense. And Anthony some of that emotional work has been changing the mindset not why did that last play not work it's how do I solve this play right here and Tunga Vailoa goes down after the fifth sack of the day for Northwestern Anthony they had one sack in their four Big Ten games before today they have five in this game alone bottom of the Big Ten Conference that's impressive effort rushing the quarterback. And Henning calls for the fair catch. And flags out. An interesting week of fair catch, catch conversations. Kicking team number 10 at the spot of the foul. 15 yard penalty. First down, Northwestern. And that's a penalty on Ty Felton. So this was the third down. RJ Pearson coming from right up the middle. He worked into the inside shoulder of Mike Purcell's rotated in at center. And in doing so, watch him as he gets that lever up, that left arm, he continues to work through the rush. He didn't win clean right off the bat, but continued to work through that outside shoulder. Then throws up the hooks on the back end. No, you know. RJ Pierce has been at a couple of different institutions. Began his career at Georgia Military College, transferred in from Bethune Cookman. And Sullivan underneath on the screen, Joseph Hyman. First down for Hyman and out of bounds. But that's maybe the biggest surprise of this game is the pressure that Northwestern has gotten. Maryland finally had a healthy offensive line. It was the sack that set up Sullivan to be back on the field. Pressure coming into the pocket there. Well timed sort of slip screen out of the backfield to Hyman, getting him into space. Hyman's been a weapon in the screen game. Had an 85-yard touchdown against UTEP on a screen earlier in the season. Sullivan running out of time. Around Fuller, and Sullivan benches it. Second down. And you know it can it can feel like you're not in position to make a play when you go to a more static look. But the penetration, the additional rush toward the pocket, Northwestern seems to have that timed up. They seem to have a pretty good beat on that. It's been the static look where there's no movement, 
pre-snap from Maryland that's given them their best opportunity and success in this half. And Sullivan had over 160 yards in the first half. And not much there through the air in the second half. Getting a few explosives. Send it Northwestern to this lead. Here comes the heat. Sullivan gets out of it with a stiff arm on Trainer for a first down. There's the toughness again for Brendan Sullivan. First down, Cats. That's where having more bodies attacking toward the line of scrimmage, more defenders with their ears pinned back flowing into the backfield, as long as you're able to slip one or two of those guys, now there's less presence at the second and third level to stop them from picking up a chunk. And that chunk of 18 yards as Sullivan and the Wildcats still on the field and in plus territory. On first and 10, Sullivan. He just had the long run. Flag out behind the run. And a short gain is Wilmot coming him out of bounds. Flag came out in the backfield. Sullivan just seems so composed today. Holding offense number 71, 10 yard penalty, first down. Well, that'll back him up. You're seeing a different level of calm than we've seen in his first two starts of the year. Certainly a more consistent degree of calm from Brendan Sullivan because he, he is mobile, so he can extend the play. He does have a live enough arm to try and hit receivers on intermediate and deep routes. But then just the composure to operate within the pocket. It's one thing that we talked to Mike Bajakian about this week it is wanting to continue to establish that, to enhance that from his young QB. And they set him up on a run, and he's out of a couple of tackles again, and he's not going down on that first hit right now. The, the number of missed tackles in the game for Maryland in the game today so far is beyond what we're accustomed to seeing from the Brian Williams defense up to this point in the season, and especially on the opposing quarterback in Brendan Sullivan. We've seen a few other players running through some contact, but this isn't Cam Porter at 220 plus. This is Brendan Sullivan able to just continue to drive his way through tackles. Maybe a bit of a flop at the end. It's a basketball season. The hoops are starting. And it didn't get him all the way back to that original line. The holding had him backed up first and 20. It could have been a lot worse on that original surge against Sullivan. Here he is on second and 15. Pointing at a guy downfield. Unloads it downfield and drops it in. The diving catch by Henning with Sullivan extending the play. This is a platform and throws an accurate ball. Henning just had the shot play and they're waiting for him now. Kellen Wyatt keeping contained for the Terps. Second down and a flag out at the end of this play. Right behind where the tackle was made. Flag came out late. What we've seen from Sullivan so far today, even that last play is a great example of that composure where he, he keeps a passing temperament while he's on the move. That's not always something that he's able to stay so refined in. Following the play, unsportsmanlike conduct, defense number one, half the distance to the goal, automatic first down. It's number one's first unsportsmanlike well, conduct look from foul. Mike Loxley. A second resulting game disqualification. Copy and paste that from the first half when Gote had an unsportsmanlike conduct foul. This was on Barham. Right in the middle first of the screen, down, him and Duke Olgis and the old headbutt. Gotcha every time, even if you feel like you're retaliating to something else the opponent did. Talked about Sullivan's composure. Maryland defense not showing it right now. Northwestern in position to take a two score lead. A fake to Jack Lausch, their gadget player, and Porter twists ahead. In meetings all week long, David Braun sure looks like a guy that believes and felt it in his soul that they could win this game. They have a first, second down and goal out of the timeout. And pushing the pile ahead with Cam Porter, they did not get there. So it'll be a third down and goal. It'll be third down and goal. Got Jack Lausch out there, gadget play. First time we've seen him. Could happen. He's in the backfield. Quarterback, receiver, running back. He does it all. 
It's a fake to Lausch. Sullivan retreats and nowhere to go with that ball. Maryland bringing heat with Wyatt forcing the throw away. We're hoping that the defense would overreact to the first time they've seen Jack Lausch take the field, especially in the backfield. So it was a quick fake. I wouldn't have minded if Brendan Sullivan maybe held the football out there a bit longer. It wasn't the most extensive fake from Sullivan. Then he reverse pivoted, and the defense was right there waiting for him. This will be a short field goal for Olsen from straight on to make this a 10 point game one more time. And Olsen bangs that through. It would be very easy for his mind to wander and wonder what's coming next year. Where will David Braun be at this point next year? But he has stayed in the moment and has his team up by 10 against Maryland. Was Losky is shoved out across the 30. He's also gotten it done on the ground. Tungavailoa in the Terps. Down a couple of scores. Corey Deitches was twisted down after a short game with Hurd up to make the hit. How urgent are you if you're Maryland on this drive? I mean, you certainly get over the ball quickly. You don't necessarily have to snap it that quickly, but, you know, beyond a methodical tempo. Tungavailoa for Jones. Pulls it in. There was absolutely no window there for him to make a catch. And there's a flag down, too. Tungavailoa dropped it in. Tremendous pass from Talia Tungavailoa. It looks like it's going to come back, pass though. Interference. Offense number six. 15 yard penalty for the previous spot. Second down. It wipes away what would have been a 33 yard game. Tungavailoa. More pressure. And Northwestern doesn't fully get home, but they do force the throw away. They had a couple of shots at him. Michael Kilbane got hands on twice. But now it's third down and 23 for the Turks. RJ Pearson able to get some penetration again on that snap. As a defensive coach, David Brown, I'm sure his heart goes into his throat on occasion when he sees Talia talking about Lowell begin to extend the play. Not a lot on the play sheet for third down and 23. And getting late in the game, almost midway through this fourth quarter. Tonga by Loa winding up. He wants it all right here and just out of the reach of Prather. Almost had the separation from a day E, but it falls for a fourth down. No consideration can really even be given. You know, if you think about it, if you can pick up maybe 10, 12 yards, bring it to more of a fourth and medium with the time remaining. Could have been worthy of consideration. But like you mentioned, went for it all there. Came up incomplete. So you really have to punt it in this scenario and hope your defense can find a way to shut the door on the Northwestern offense in quick fashion. It looked for a second like Maryland was on the march. Jay Sean Jones, great catch, 33 yards. Called back for pass interference. And then Maryland doesn't move the ball in the final two plays of the drive. Oh, big pop. And the Henning is drilled. Greeley coming down and making the special teams tackle. Today is the first day where Northwestern has had a 10 point lead in Big Ten play. They led Penn State by seven, but they haven't been in. Many of these spots at all, whether it was non-conference or Big Ten games, where it's let's put together a four or five minute drive, run out some clock. And getting into, you know, we would use the term four minute offense mode where you're trying to milk the clock. So it doesn't always necessarily apply specifically to when there's four minutes remaining, but you do want the clock to tick. We saw at the end of the first half where there was an opportunity to get the clock running a bit more. They had a couple of moments where they stopped the clock for the Terps. Maryland was able to tack on a field goal there. Sullivan sets up the screen. It's Hyman who had a first down on one of these earlier. Oh, what a move in the open field. Joseph Hyman cutting back. Hyman still on the run. And out of bounds inside the 10. He's not even gassed after that. He stays on the field. And they give it right back to him. Well, it's second down and goal. 
After Hyman's long run, he checks out for Tyus. Off the edge, Tyus is tripped up. Gote, six yards to get. Sullivan got him all. Henning with the contested catch. Or did he? Did it come the out? Or was there a timeout? Pass. Fourth down. They brought the ball back to the six. They say this is incomplete. Glendon so Miller, Miller had the coverage. He was there wrestling away with A.J. Henning. As he rolls over, he's got possession of the football, but the side judge over on the opposite side of the field seems to have ruled that the ball did hit the ground. It looks like from there, that angle, that initially the ball touches down to the ground and just bounces back up into the stomach of A.J. Henning. Field goal of 29 yards instead of 24 yards. And potentially, Northwestern doing so on purpose for a better angle on the kick. And the perfect day continues for Jack Olson. There's probably some folks watching this game saying, why not just go for the touchdown on fourth down? On a squib kick from Northwestern that's covered up by Maryland. And they did kick the field goal, and it's still a two score game. So Tunga Vailoa and Maryland have to work quickly. Ty Felton slips out of a tackle and tight ropes the sideline for a first down. Out of the 40, in the 30, in the 20. When they're nearing the end zone, things have really gotten difficult for the Maryland offense, but that's a part of the David Braun defensive structure. Where they're going to keep a roof on the coverage with the safety, and throughout the majority of the game, it's mainly been Devin Turner in the deep third for Northwestern. Trying to keep the roof on Tunga Vailoa late in the game. He had eyes downfield, back underneath again to Deitchus, who backs his way out of bounds. And it's not much more vital right now, Connor, where you want to make sure, not only at the safety position, but even the corners. Allow them to complete passes in front of you. Allow that clock just to continue to churn. As long as you come up and make tackles, then the play clock is the enemy of Maryland now. Back underneath, Felton, first down to the 30. This was a Maryland offense, Anthony, that was lightning right out of the gate in this game. It took them two minutes to go down and score a touchdown on their first touch. And the Northwestern hasn't bottled up for a lot of the afternoon since then. Chasing two touchdowns, Tunga Vailoa into tight coverage, and Turner breaks it up on Deitches, but a flag out at the end of it. Felt like Tonga Valoa had an opportunity to maybe get to this pass even a hair earlier. He wanted to be a little more certain that he liked what he saw in that matchup between Deitches and Turner. Pass interference, defense, number nine, at the spot of the foul, automatic, first down. Turner with that right arm, holding down the right arm of Corey Deitches in the So inside the red zone for Tungavalo and the Terps. And over the middle, Jay Sean Jones bounces into the end zone. Just like that, Maryland back within a score. It's the first extremely quick scoring drive that we've seen from Maryland. This kick's going deep, right? I believe so, yeah. We've seen onside kicks from the Terps this season. And it does go deep. Northwestern was ready if it was short of first place in the West. And it's Porter. And he got back to the line and then another yard before Colbert knocked him down. I wonder what the conversations have been. Well, we might find out right here how much trust Northwestern has in Brendan Sullivan. On a second down, a toss to Tyus. And here comes Jay Sean Barham with Bo Braid to force a third down and a timeout for Maryland, their second of the half. Looking for their first win in about a month. Trying to get the offense back in the field on a third down. Sullivan setting to throw. Gote on the chase, and Gote slowed down Sullivan. And it's fourth down coming for the Wildcats with Maryland taking their last time out. Jay Sean Jones oh. back to get this punt, and it's a short one. And about 59 yards to get. What that field goal did do is make Maryland's 
get a touchdown, not tie it with a field goal. Tonga Vailoa still alive, and down he goes. Aiden Hubbard stayed with him. That's where the lack of timeouts makes a huge difference here. The continued pursuit of Hubbard and all his buddies up front. Mike Loxley said he's going to find out a lot about his team this week. It's Roman Hemby. And backs his way close to a first down. Loxley told us that he still feels like they're the team that he talked about at Big Ten Media Day. They're ready to compete for championships. Certainly spoken about this being a player led locker room. Moments like this is where your leadership has to rise up. A chance to prove it on this drive, and Hemby sticks his nose in there for a first down. Is to win with this team. That's why he stayed. He has this complete. And out across the 45 in a plus territory with Corey Deitches. But the clock at two minutes and rolling. No, you've got at least four downs every time you begin a new set of downs. Another quick hit out. It's Deitches again and along the sideline a first down. Now the quarterback, Tung Bailoa, wearing that Illinois loss very heavily before the bye week for Maryland. And trying to put together a comeback, but that is stuck by Ron Hurd. Octavian Smith with nothing there. It feels like you know this situation is aching for a double move. We've seen so many of these tunnel screens and now routes from Maryland on this drive. And Tonga Bailoa does go sideline, but it's dropped. Ty Felton would have had a first down inside the 10. Knowing he's still got fourth. And pressure off the edge. Maryland picks it up and off target. Was that caught? It was intercepted by Ozima. The one thing David Braun has told us about Coco Ozima, the way that he performs, the way he practices, is a part of what gives him that credibility in the locker room. Golden Gophers putting themselves back in the thick of the Big Ten West conversation. And at this point, it's not a team in this division that you can really say is out of it in the West. Well, David Braun had coffee with his wife Kristen a few weeks ago. They were talking about the future. They reminded each other, got to stay in the moment. We are best serving this guy, these guys if we don't think about what's going to happen to our family next year. David Braun just won his fourth game as the interim head coach and his second in the Big Ten. Far beyond expectations for what was thought that Northwestern football would have the potential to accomplish. I mean, frankly, over the last couple of years, even without all the upheaval over the offseason, this was viewed as a season that would be difficult for Northwestern to be four and four 